Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Hero Quest, the game system by Hasbro and Avalon Hill. This is a game that plays two to five players, takes roughly about an hour per scenario, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Hero Quest, it is an old school 1990s, early 1990s dungeon crawler. You'll be playing as the dwarf, barbarian, elf, or wizard, or you can play as the DM. In a two player game, one player will play as the DM, and the other player will play as all the heroes, or as many as they want. And and then it just goes up from there. Five player game, everybody gets their own character. Each player is going to get a character, it's going to get a character card, and a reference sheet. The elf will get one set of spells and the wizard will get the rest. And then you're going to divide the dice evenly so that players are going to have what they need. And then the battle will commence. Each scenario is different, found in the scenario book. You'll start from one and progress through as you acquire new equipment, new spells, and new artifacts up until the last and final scenario where you'll defeat the main boss. Can you get through all of hero quests or will the dungeon master defeat you beyond your journey? Find out in the game as we talk, cover the how to play, and of course, the how to set up, and then finally, my review. To set up the game Hero Quest, the first thing you'll do is you'll take the main game board out and place it within reach of all players. Then, each player will choose to play a character or play as the DM. Make sure that you use all the characters regardless of the number of players playing the game. After that, each player will receive a character card and a reference sheet, as well as potential spells if they're playing as either the elf or wizard. The DM is going to get their own DM board, as well as a set of dread spells that they may or may not use. And they're also going to place out monsters so that all players can see their stats on the left-hand side of the game board. On the right-hand side is going to be equipment, treasures, and artifacts, as well as tokens that will be used throughout the game. Give each player a character sheet and allow them to write down their name and the character they're using, as well as their body points, which is their health. Uh, you can also write down how many attack, defense, body, and mind that you have, any weapons and armor, and of course the gold coins that you acquire throughout the quest, as well as potentially pot potions or other mystical items that you'll gain as you play. I will give three of the attack dice to me, the DM, and three of the attack dice to the players, and then we'll set the movement dice somewhere within reach of all players, and after that, just set aside all the extra minis and prepare for the game. Now, in the unique uh, scenarios that will come in this game, which I believe anywhere between 14 and 16, the first one will have all the players start in the staircase, which is where you will enter and exit the dungeon, and place in this one unique space on the game board. Whatever the players can see, typically what's going to be in this room here, is going to be available for them. In this case, there's just a singular closed door, which will progress through the game and unlock new things as they see them. Basically after that, you're ready to begin the game. It's a pretty simple setup and it's mainly all based on this wonderful little scenario guide that the DM will construct as the game goes through. So, how do you play? Hero Quest is a classic dungeon crawl using the most basic form of rules and mechanics. The players, when it's their turn, which the game will go in turns, will start with one player playing as a character and progress through all the players and then finally the dungeon master. On a player's turn, they can do two things in any order, they just can't split them. They can roll to move by rolling the two red dice and adding them together and moving their character as far as they want based on the number, and then they can perform an action. Actions are listed on your reference as well as on the back of the Dungeon Master's board here. Your actions are as follows. A, you can attack a monster that is adjacent to you utilizing your attack die and the monster's defense die. B, you can cast a spell on either your allies or a monster based on the spells that you have. When you cast a spell, that spell will be discarded forever and you no longer can use it. Another thing that you can do is you can search for treasure in a room. If it has never had treasure been searched for it, then the DM will let you know if there is a treasure chest present. If there is, the DM will give you whatever rewards there are. If there is not, you'll draw from the treasure deck. The treasure deck could have wandering monsters or traps in it, or could give you things like potions or elixirs of speed. Another thing that you can do is you can search for secret doors in the rooms or corridors if they are, well, that the character is in. If there's a secret door or a corridor, these are things that are typically just not visible to you, and you have to kind of use an action in order to find it, and when you do, it'll give you a new encounter. And then, of course, you can search for traps and disarm traps. If you don't, and you happen to walk into a trap, you'll suffer the effects based on whatever it says inside the scenario booklet. Once you've chosen to move and then do one of those actions, each player will go through this, it'll come to the DM. And the DM will perform basically the same thing, 
They'll move each of their monsters, but instead of a die roll, it will be based on whatever the monster's base movement is. So for instance, if I have this Dread Warrior here, it has a movement of seven squares. And as well, it actually tells you on this card what the stats are so that everybody can see them. It has four attack die, four defense die, three body points, and three mind points. Mind points are not really utilized except until later on when they're able to use things like dread spells. But for the most part, the first few scenarios are not going to have anything to do with the mind points. After the DM has moved and attacked with their monsters, because that's the only action you can take with monsters, unless it specifies otherwise, allowing you to use dread cards, it will then go back to the heroes and they will take their turns. Things to note, when you walk through a closed door, it will become an open door. That door will remain open for the rest of the game. When you place things down, they will remain there for the rest of the game, regardless of whether you're in the room or not. But if you cannot see something or have not been to somewhere, those are going to be hidden objects. As players leave rooms and exit into corridors or hallways, then the DM will check to see if anything is visible to that player. And if it is, based on whatever is in this quest booklet here, they're going to place it out. Maybe they walked near a door and the door has now appeared. Maybe they found a monster in the hallway and have now encountered the monster, thusly allowing the DM to use it if it's still on the board by the time it is their turn. Each of the unique objects in the game are going to be found in different locations, and depending on the scenario, different rooms are going to be occupied with different things. There's a variety of things in the game that could happen to be inside of one of the different corridors or one of the different rooms. Things like sarcophagi, things like bookshelves or open cabinets, or even maybe an altar with a mystical book. You're also always going to find treasure in rooms, which are going to give you unique benefits, which could be either artifacts or gold. And so as you progressively move throughout the dungeon, things are going to appear before your eyes, creating the unique dungeon experience. Additionally, when you're walking through different areas, some dungeons might be actually smaller than they seem, and you're going to have the DM block certain areas, thusly representing a smaller dungeon than what they might appear to be as you move throughout the board, so that each scenario is different and has a different layout that players can move through. The objective of Hero Quest is pretty simple. The players are attempting to complete whatever quest book scenario objective that they are trying to do. The first scenario might be to try and defeat the gargoyle, which means they have to find the room the gargoyle is in and then defeat them and then leave through the stairs. Now, of course, you can do that and simply walk to the place and then leave, but you can also choose to explore the rest of the dungeon, finding new traps, finding new treasures, and defeating new monsters. Some of the different areas that you search, like weapon racks or maybe even library cases or books and all that kind of stuff, might give you unique uh, wording that the DM can utilize, thusly saying, you've now earned this or that, you've searched the weapon rack and you found a short sword, etc, etc, which is all detailed in this quest booklet. And the DM, when going through the game, uh, presenting new objects based on whatever the quest says, uh, they are going to have a unique little set of notes prefaced here in letters. And the letters will be represented in this uh, map here. So it might be that the treasure chest is empty. Or the hero who searches this treasure chest finds 84 gold coins. So each scenario is going to have unique things for each of the different areas. But it's fairly simple. Roll and move, take an action, everybody does this, and then the monster, or I should say the DM, removes all of the monsters and you'll rinse and repeat up until the quest is complete or a hero passes away. If a hero's body points ever hit zero, they're dead and they're out of the game. Hopefully you don't have this happen to you. Um, and if the entire party is removed, they are defeated. You can always reset a new character and start another campaign if you would like. Or if you win, you'll progress to the next one and continue. Additionally, if you complete the whole game, or if you just like to, you can make your own scenarios as a DM and create your own unique dungeon or an entire version of Hero Quest all on your own. In fact, stack two sets of Hero, Hero Quest together and make two forms of Hero Quest if you so would like. My initial thoughts of Hero Quest was that it was going to be a fairly simple old school dungeon crawler, rolling to move, attacking by a combat, utilizing the dice, a few spells thrown in here and there, and some wording. And for the most part, I was right. I mean, if you imagine based on me explaining this game that it is going to be a simple dungeon crawler, a light one, and something with a little bit more outdated rules, then you would be accurate. 
but what I was not expecting is the amount of fun I would have in Hero Quest. Performing as the DM is exciting. There are different moments in the game in which combat can swing in favor of one side or another. Having heroes work together can be very beneficial, and in fact, if you ever have a hero kind of doing their own thing and not staying within range or eyesight of the group, it can cause the peril of the other party. You as the DM can also have a little bit of control over how the game goes. You don't have to choose to womp on the players. You can let them experience and go through and gain new items and progress from scenario to scenario. Or if you'd like, you can unleash the full force of the horde of whatever is provided to you based on the bad choices that heroes make. So in just like in D&D, the DM can have kind of a bit of control in the gaming scenario. And additionally, making your own quests as well, you can choose to make any type of dungeon you'd like. A simple one, a complex one, or a difficult one, or maybe two of the three in any combination you would like. I also like the fact that there is a ton of unique features in the game as you go through the different areas. Each room will feel kind of unique and different with different types of monsters. Maybe some text in the rule booklet is assisting to something that happens in the book or the uh, unique room. Maybe instead of encountering just a mummy that was originally found in the king's graveyard that worked for the king as a guard, and thusly he has a plus one bonus attack. He's just a little bit stronger with a little bit of extra story. And I love those little moments in the game. Kind of wish there was a little more, but I love the fact that you can make your own game so you're going to be able to kind of construct whatever you would like with as much dialogue as you'd like can just push that kind of narrative of the mind um, or theater of the mind I should say up to an 11 where this is kind of more like a three or a four this is a pretty standard straightforward dungeon crawl but I love the moments I love feeling like uh, just when they thought it was impossible to defeat the boss they have that opportunity or just when I only have the gargoyle left and he's all by himself with only one HP all of a sudden they just can't hit their rolls and now I'm walloping them I had a really great great time playing this game. I, I was shocked actually. I wasn't sure what to expect. And I was kind of thinking, oh, outdated and old, not very exciting. But what I got was a wonderful experience. I love the idea of the heroes being able to choose their own outcomes and how they kind of make these terrible decisions. And I can kind of play off that or I can allow them to kind of experience it and realize the mistakes they made so they can improve as they move from scenario to scenario. I like the aspect that this game has a lot of unique equipment that can be added to the heroes. The treasure deck is able to be search, but you have an opportunity, or lack of an opportunity, to sometimes get what you need, and sometimes you'll get what you don't need, like a monster that now I can control because the heroes got too greedy. And the artifacts, while there are a few and far between, are very powerful, and they can equip their heroes and utilize them, as well as, of course, purchasing equipment from round to round, thusly making their characters feel different each and every time that they play. The character sheets are fairly straightforward, and this is a nice intro into not only how D&D works as a base game as far as rolling dice and moving and combat with a little bit of narrative storyline, but the customization features are wonderful. Speaking of wonderful, the quality of this game is excellent. I was so impressed. I love the quality of the board, the DM screen, the cards are all nice with wonderful artwork, as well as every single miniature in the game is excellent. They are fully detailed miniatures, they all look exactly as their uh, counterparts on cards do, and you can tell them apart. And of course you can paint them and the mini furniture pieces as well you know you get to have your bookcase with your, your, your book on side of an on an altar with the candles and whatnot and so if you're a big fan of painting this game is going to give you a ton and i mean a ton of different little miniatures that not only you can use in this game but if you'd like in your own DD campaign so this kind of is a game that not only folds into its own form of hero quest but hero quest can be used in D&D as well, you can have your, this is giving you your own dungeon that you can outline with your own tiles that you need to outline it, along with the characters that you need and any of the furnishings as well. And Hero Quest also comes with expansions, which I have and I will review, that kind of give you even more options. And that is wonderful. I had, I don't know, I just really, really liked this game. It was a lot of fun. Now, that being said, remember though, this is an older style game with older mechanics. So if you hate rolling to move, sometimes you'll get an eight and sometimes you'll get a three. It can happen. Or rolling the combat dice. Sometimes you're gonna get the damage you need, and other times you're gonna get not the damage that you need. And you have to be okay with that. You have to know that this is gonna be one of those kind of chucking dice style games, and enjoy it for what it is, because there are gonna be moments in the game that are excellent, and some of those moments that feel bad. And that's a great combination for these type of games. Yes, it's no Gloomhaven or Frosthaven in the terms of mechanics and storyline and feel, but what it does bring is those really great instances of fun, something very simple for anybody to enjoy, and it's a quick thing you can explain, put out, and make your own if you would like. 
I actually really love Hero Quest. I'm keeping this game. This will probably even play more than Gloomhaven. I'll probably play through Gloomhaven once, and then after that, I'm probably gonna be done with it because it's just very, very, you know, it's very thick. In fact, well, that's kind of what happened. I played through it and I'm just like, okay, it's a lot of setup, it's a lot of explanation. If I play in a new group of people, this one here is simple. Roll, action, pass. My turn. Monsters in the field? Yes. Attack. No? I'm done. Very simple, very straightforward, wonderful introduction to D&D, &D, dungeon crawling, and just having fun all at the same time. Hero Quest, A+. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Hero Quest. The updated version, mind you, it's got the cooler minis and it's a higher quality game, but I think it's very similar to the original game. I didn't have the full nostalgia because I never played the original, but I had the idea of nostalgia because I had seen videos of it played and the best thing about Hero Quest is, so I really wanted to check it out and I'm glad I did. I'm really happy I did. I was kind of shocked that I enjoyed it as much as I did. So hopefully you will as well, or if you've already played Hero Quest and you enjoy it, I'd love to hear why you enjoy it so much or if you don't like it I mean I probably already know because it's kind of dated but you can tell me as well <laughs> anyway guys we have a live stream on Sundays at 6 30 p.m. PST but not this Sunday and of course we have a whatnot stream on Wednesdays thank you guys so much for watching and as always I look forward to playing a game of hero quest with you next time